hello 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 making another video it looks like new but it's not it's settled looks gorgeous these ones they settle they are very grateful oh this is so delightful Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, it is such a delight to do this. So wonderful. It has some particles in it. That's great. Today, I did a hair cure for my hair because my hair is split very, very, very badly split. And I think it has to do with heavy metal poisoning. I had a lot of heavy metal poisoning in my life. Mercury poisoning. I've talked about this before. We had our mercury fillings removed at Dr. Roda's office in LA and he does it safely. And I hope he's doing well. And we had everything replaced with, I have some gold fillings from the past, but they're coming out now. But the gold is, it's like a gold, inlay you know that is that's also a mixture of metals i'm sure but there's no mercury in it it's just to stabilize to make the gold i think to make the gold sturdy or something i don't know but yeah gold inlays that lasted for 20 years and so, but I have everything replaced now with white composite, real, real strong composite filling material, which works the best. It's non-toxic and it works the best for anyone who wants to detox. And it lasts for a long time, you know, it lasts for at least 20 years. Mercury, Amaga Mercury, you know, when, when we were children, no one knew about the toxicity of it, or it just, it just wasn't, it wasn't considered at all. So my brother and I, we constantly or chewing on candy and stuff like this, pulling those fillings out, chewing on them, crumpling them up, the mercury getting released, getting into the system, and so on. So it caused me split hair. That's not good, so that's why I have to keep trimming my hair. I trimmed it today. And after I trimmed my hair, I did a hydrangea hair mask it was wonderful absolutely wonderful and I did a a dark brown terracotta kaolin clay facial mask and I all rinsed it all out out there in the forest and it felt absolutely, it felt amazing. The mask, the hair mask and the face mask, absolutely amazing. And I got all of this as a present from Mother Earth. We have the clay in the ground here and it's, it smells so amazing. I'm so infinitely grateful for that. That clay smells so amazing. 
you know, it's not hovel, right? It's not, it is not made to put on as a face mask. It has a lot of little pebbles in there and a little other things. And I don't know what all is in there. There may be larvae in there, <laughs> who knows? But I don't care, I just pull it right out of the ground and I put all of this on my face and it gives my face, makes my face dark brown like chocolate. And then it dries on and it becomes like a gray brown. And then you wash it off and it feels absolutely amazing. It circulates the skin, it's fantastic. And the hydrangea mask I made myself from hydrangea flowers that we harvested ourselves. We have those at the other house. We have a big brush of those and they are amazing. It's an amazing blue. It's a real, real bright blue. I don't have an example for that here. I know. A real, real amazing bright light blue. And I always collect those when they are ready and then I have them for the whole year because I also use those as supplementation for Papa Dog and myself because hydrangea, just, a, just three, three little petals of it per day is helps with back pain and joint and Papa Dog has joint problems, probably arthritis. And so it's, it's, it completely cures that. It's, it's absolutely amazing. It's like a natural version of Vioxx, but without the side effects, without the liver damage, without any of these complications. It's just a supplementation, all natural completely non-toxic. Dogs cannot have too much of that because too high of a dose can, can be toxic for dogs. But three, just three little petals of those per day for a dog that has very strong arthritis or back pain or hip problems, something like that. For that, I highly recommend it. And he's doing very well on this. He's running and jumping. He was not running and jumping when we first adopted him. So he's doing really, really well. It's almost like turning the time back. It's like age reversion. And I believe that is also another medicinal property of hydrangea, age reversion. It appears to be that way. So it's absolutely great. I'm very, very happy about this. And I also take the, the Pierre, as I call him, Pierre Jardin. My Pierre, that's the nickname for my, for the other plant, for the the age reversion plant it's not been tested it's not been studied i test this on myself and after i tested it on myself i have given kenny our former dog just a tiny little sliver of it for a couple of days and i it it felt it appeared that he was feeling better on that. So, and I always gave that to him also when he was extra nervous. And he was very nervous because he was an albino. So it helps with nervousness. It reduces and balances the heart rate. And it brings oxygen into the body, more oxygen, calms the nerves. It's good on all levels, but only in very, very tiny fractions of, you know, just like a, a millimeter 
or two millimeters of a leaf. They also have flowers and they are tiny little bell flowers and those appear to not have these components in it, not to in that concentration. The lance-like, lance-shaped leaves, about the size of my thumb, very dark, very thick resinous. You know, whenever we see leaves that have like a shiny, very thick resinous, almost a waxy surface, then chances are high that there are very strong medicinal properties in it and in large amounts can be toxic. So always we have to always be very, very careful about this because there are some plants that are very, very toxic. They have very high concentrations of toxins. So and they may be used for homeopathic medications where they only use like a an where they dilute this to like by thousands of times then it is not toxic but I don't I used to take homeopathic medication in the past worked for me but I it's very expensive and I prefer to just harvest my own plants and experiment a little bit on myself with that. And that works the best for me. So. And the hydrangea hair mask that felt so amazing. I recommend this to other people. So I I took like a couple of hydrangea flowers that I had. They were already dehydrated. They, I had dried them out there in a cloth bag. And I put those into a blender. I chopped it up a little bit. And I also put some dandelion flowers in with it and a flower from the butterfly brush. So they are, that was also dehydrated and I had that sitting there for a while and I thought, okay, so I might just will make myself a hair mask with it. And I stuffed it all into the blender. I have a very nice KitchenAid blender that works very, very well. It's not overpriced like these other blenders are. It costs about $100 and it is fantastic, absolutely fantastic. High, very high quality. Works very well, it has an amazingly strong motor in it. And I put filtered water in it. I blend it all up on level three. I don't, I usually don't go beyond level three. And then I poured this over my head after I trimmed my hair outside over the ivy. And I massaged this all in and then I put one of my self-made hoods on that are, that I made out of a felt material, which is warm but it breathes at the same time it keeps the moisture also in so it's really amazing i use also i use those also for my henna applications works very very well and then after i took a rinse shower washed all of this out outside i put my self-made facial cream on and that felt so amazing. I have a lot of jasmine essential oil in that facial cream and it smells really really amazing and it has beeswax and other waxes and it has different clays in it as well the facial cream. It's really great. Very awesome. My facial creams work the absolute best. 
we work even better than any of the the other ones that I buy. I love, of course, I love Dr. Hauschka and Veleda. Those are my favorites. But my self-made creams are even better. They are the best. And you can make that yourself, you know. You don't have to have somebody else make that for you. You can make that yourself in the kitchen. It's very easy to do. And those base ingredients, they are reasonably priced. I get mine at Star Wars Botanicals. It's an amazing store. I very much recommend them. They, they are completely green. The, the entire the company is green. They, they use renewable energy resources for their factory, for their laboratory, where they mix up and, and create those essential, 100% natural essential oils and other things so, that they make themselves. Hydrosol sprays and air sprays, room sprays, creams they make. And they also sell base, the base products as well, like clays and waxes for people to make their own stuff. Real great company. And I also recommend Eden Botanical. Eden Botanicals has a very, very wide range of fantastic, essential, all-natural oils. They, they make sure they're very, very meticulous about this. They make sure that, they, that those oils are not polluted or diluted or tweaked or made false or you know those those things are happening a lot particularly in third world countries you have to really know the source you have to know the people you know, that the project and so on there's a lot of fraud people out there that will do all kinds of horrible things to dilute and dilution is not the worst problem the worst problem is when they add other things to it that are even toxic to make it way more you know, when you buy when you buy pulverized items particularly turmeric you know you, I do not rec I, I never ever 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 buy turmeric pulverized again after I heard this luckily I got my pulverized turmeric from from Eden Eden Foods, that's a different company. They're out there in Michigan. It's a food company. Eden Foods, very, very high quality. And I contacted them. I told them what I learned, what I heard about, that there's this risk. And they said they made sure they have uh, they have a laboratory. They, they test this very carefully to make sure that their turmeric powder is pure. But why take the risk? You know why take the chance, particularly when it is a, when it's coming from a medicinal herb, that is very expensive. Then chances are very high that people in India, particularly, will, they will put stuff in it. For example, lead. And that is exactly what you want to heal with the turmeric. You don't want to put turmeric filled with lead into your body. You know. But it's, it's, that is the kind of stuff that really bothers me. And that is also why I make these videos. Because I'm very, very, very concerned about these, these things happening. People doing something like this. That is so, that's 
so irresponsible, so greedy, so criminal, and so extremely unethical to do something like this. So that's why I talk about these things. But yeah, I don't recommend for people to buy turmeric powder. I buy turmeric roots fresh at Amazon. They send those to all locations. Turmeric roots. And I get the package, the two pound package, one, one pound turmeric roots, one pound ginger roots, fresh, organic. I get that, that package, and it's wonderful. And I eat the turmeric roots raw, or I put it in the blender. It tastes very fresh, and the ginger is very spicy and wonderful. Ginger is a complete stomach healer. If you have if you ever have stomach problems or intestinal upset or bloating or something, gin, eat ginger root. Chew on a ginger root all day long. You know, you can't eat a whole lot of this at, one, at once because it will, it will be too spicy. But you chew little pieces. It tastes a bit, a bit like soap, like eating soap. But it tastes very fresh, and it is also a mouth deodorizer. It gets rid of any kind of bad bacteria, bacterium. And it gets rid of mold, it gets rid of viruses. You know, this is very great. That's, that, that works really well for breath freshener and you know, if you want to have something to chew on, like a gum, sort of, you know, you can, you bite a piece off and it lasts you a long time to chew on it because it's very, it has very high fiber content you know, and it is good for you, you know, it's good all the way around, much better than gum, you know, gum has all kinds of stuff in it that we don't want to put in our bodies. I don't even want to put xylitol into my body. I don't even want that. I couldn't even find a, a sweet free gum at all. They don't even send it. But chewing on a ginger root, that, that really, that's amazing. That's really good. Yes. Yeah, that Rubbermaid tank that you bought. Yeah. There's a hundred and forty-one dollars at Home Depot. Okay, I'm making a video, <laughs> and I told him. You're making a video right now. Yes, and I told you that I'm making a video. I'm It is what it is. It is all perfectly perfect, perfectly and perfect imperfect, perfectly imperfect. The perfected Im imperfection. And that's what life is. If you want perfection, <laughs> then you're not even alive anymore. Life 
is flawed. Right. Yeah, we don't look like Barbette or Ophelia, the, the animation dolls. We don't look like Barbie and Ken. <laughs> or the Cabbage Patch doll. There are some people that look a little bit like Cabbage Patch doll. That uh, Javier Roberts looks a little bit like a Cabbage Patch doll. And James Hetfield. And some other people with Scottish, Irish, and Native American in them. So they have that Cabbage Patch. Some of them do. I don't have that. I am from, I'm straight from people like Genghis Khan and Vladimir the Impaler. That's where I'm coming from. Related to Mother Teresa, by the way. I could trace that back. I know I am related to her. I can trace that straight back to her. You know. You straight, you trace it far enough back, and there, and there she is, Mother Teresa. There's our common ancestor. <laughs> I also have. I know I have. Um, I have the white Neanderthal in me. I know that at least three percent of it. And I also have a little bit of the maybe like 0.1% uh, or something of the Asian Neanderthal I have in me too. Because I got that from my mother's side of the family. I have a birthmark in the shape of a heart. I don't know if you can, you can see it. Yes, you see it? It's very faint, but it's the heart. Mm -hmm. And that comes from the Mongolian side of the family, from my mother. I also have blood type B, and my mother does too, so, which is rather rare. And it comes from Mongolia, so that's how I know for sure. Russian, Mongolian, Armenian, might have Italian. I think I do. I think I also have something, and that comes from my father's side. It traces back, all the way back to, to to those families that were that were art lovers. The Medici's, the Medici popes, the Medici family. It'd be very interesting to find out, <laughs> but that's not that important. You can go to Ancestry.com and pay a chunk of money and have a DNA analysis done, and they will they will they will trace you back to to the different ethnic groups that have walked across the planet. And the different regions that they have dwelled in and 
from which they have migrated further into different other places on the planet, including Australia and the United States. The reason why there are people in Sweden, Norway, Finland and Iceland who have slanted eyes and squinted eyes is because there was a nomadic movement coming from the Asian Neanderthal and the Asian the Asian population and some some of those branches have branched out into the Scandinavian countries from there, you know, it took a long time. From there, they became blonde because it worked better for them. They became very pale because they needed to absorb more of the sun, the sunlight. So they had have less less pigments because they needed to absorb more of the sunlight. So when you have a lot of pigments, that means that is its own sun protection. So when you live, when you live near the equator, then you have to have your own natural sun protection. Or the the people that don't have that, they may not have lived as long. So it weeded itself out that way. So, but. Yeah, the people that have very straight red or blonde hair and kind of round faces with cabbage patch eyes and slanted eyes and even Asian looking eyes, like Björk, the singer, for example, is a good example for that. Um, there is there there are the nomadic. Asian tribes that have gone into that proliferation of DNA that have been traded from one generation to another. And beautiful people, very beautiful. Yeah, and then another tribe entered into that Arctic Circle. At that time, the Arctic Circle was closed. It was, the ice caps were closed and they created a pathway to the America, the Americas, the American continent, the American continent, which is two actually. So the American continents, the two American continents. So they entered from the Bering Strait, which was all frozen in. And they were just like, maybe there were a hundred people, not more. So it was so, maybe a hundred people who made it through onto the actual mainland. It must have been catastrophic. A lot of them, a lot of them didn't make it. You know, they ventured further and further out into these polar regions. Some of them became the Inuits, and 
they stayed there and they were they adapted themselves to that climate they learned how to cope and others moved on and they moved to the american continents to the mainland and from there they kept moving moving further and further into the americas and into south america as well So that's where the Native Americans have their slanted eyes from and their Asian type of look. And it's very beautiful, okay, very beautiful. And everyone should be very grateful for what they have, for the beauty they have. Everyone is beautiful. Every ethnicity is beautiful, equally beautiful. There's no need to be jealous of anyone. I'm a bit jealous of black women, of course, because they're gorgeous. And all the German men want them. <laughs> and my black boyfriend in Germany made, made me feel made me feel like I don't count <laughs> made me feel so insignificant and so unsexy and so unwanted because every man wanted her instead and, and then later on I found out why that is it's because of our DNA we choose a partner that is very, 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 very distant to our own DNA. That's what we find sexy. Yes, that is the case. So, my, my diva girlfriend she was, she was hailed as a diva, and I was, the, I was the ugly duckling that was duckling behind her, <laughs> unseen. And it felt really, really awful. At some point, I finally said to her, this is too painful for me. It's too painful. And we both sat there on a park bench and cried. I said, I'm so sorry, but you know, I have to go my own way. You go your own way, I go my own way. I'm too jealous. It was very painful. I'm probably gonna get real bad hate for this. I don't even know if I can upload this video because people will always misunderstand everything. Everything is immediately misunderstood and seen through the lens of a very distorted glass. Unempowerment glass or jealousy glass or feeling trampled on, or you know, all these distortions, glass distortions that people look through, instead of looking at it for what it is. Yeah, I'm jealous. I find black women ex extraordinarily gorgeous. One black man said to me, I'm glad you, you're jealous. You deserve to be jealous. See, always seeing things through the distortion of unempowerment and wanting to get even with people, getting even, or feeling, feeling 
victimized. Now you want to get even. Victimized for who victimized you? I victimized anyone for for being for feeling victimized. I victimized anyone with my mental illness, with my jealousy. I don't think so, because I was intellectually honest about it. I said, this is hurting. We cried and we walked our own ways. I've been friends with her for like 10 years. So. Very close friends. It was painful. It was very painful. Only a, a God level soul or a Buddha level soul is has no more ego, no more insecurity about who who am I and do I get love too and what is my identity and all of these things? I kind I kind of lost my identity, you know. I felt like a nobody next to her. It was painful. Don't hate me for that. Don't hate me for suffering. I don't hate you. for your suffering. I feel for everyone who has jealousy issues. I still have jealousy issues, but I want to heal it. I'm in the process of healing all of this. Sometimes that healing process will take a whole lifetime. And that didn't have, that didn't start with a girlfriend or boyfriend or this or that person. No, 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 no. That started way, way, way earlier. That started with your mother. That started with your caregiver, whoever that is. The person who fed you, nursed you. And if they don't tell you that you are gorgeous and you are beautiful the way you are and if they don't tell you that they love you 100% unconditionally much, and if they don't hug you, if, if they miss out on this, on this real setting for your life, then later on it will show up in different forms of mental illness and jealousy and feeling unempowered. It's not the Illuminati who you have to blame for this. It's your parents. Okay? That's a fact. But people, even those beaten physically, they, they will never bite the hand that beat them. They will bite the hand of those who are who are kind. That makes this whole thing so incredibly difficult. So complicated. It's so complicated. They will go after the one who is different. They will hurt the one who's different from them. A Republican will go after a hippie, having been beaten by his minister father, 
will adhere to the religion even more, will go after the hippie who is liberated, the hippie who says to him, come with me, let's liberate ourselves. He will hurt that person. He will eat that person. Another person will, will hate anyone who's not of their religion. Kill these people that want to free them, that liberate them, allow them into their countries. That's mental illness. And religion is mental illness. That's extreme mental illness. I'm, I'm already in the transition tunnel now. I'm going through it. I'm ruthlessly honest with myself. I'm honest with you about it. Sometimes I get in the, into the mental state of hate, where I hate people who are violent, I, where I hate a psychopath. But I come back out of it. I can always come back out of that state. And then I look at, look at it from above. And then I can say I don't hate anyone. I really don't hate anyone. I, I only feel compassion for everyone. Because everyone is a victim of infancy neglect. That doesn't mean we have to still be victims. If you become 